Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're so excited to have our fourth annual uh, BITS meeting. Uh, we avoided the terrible rains of last year. People were able to make it. We're really excited about that, if people remember the torrential rain uh, we suffered from. Um, we have a really exciting two days ahead. Uh, there's the session this afternoon and again uh, tomorrow morning. What I'd like to do to start um, is give you a little bit of an overview on BITS for those that are uh, new to BITS or just uh, learning about it, uh, and uh, go through what we're calling the year in review, what we've been up to, what's been going on in this space of research transparency and reproducibility, uh, and looking ahead to uh, our plans for the coming year, and then I'll give you a little bit of an overview uh, of what's coming next and, and introduce the next, um, the next speaker. Um, BITS was established a few years ago, and our goal is to strengthen scientific practices in the social sciences uh, with a really uh, you know, central focus on uh, transparency practices and reproducibility. We need better science uh, simply for, to have better scholarship. There's inherent value in, in doing what we do better uh, and trying to get towards the truth or understand the world better. There are also really important implications for real world policy of what we do. So generating evidence that is more reliable, more credible, uh, more rigorous, more transparent uh, serves both of those goals. BITS started a few years ago as just a small collection of folks, we were just talking about this with Kevin earlier today, across fields. And it was a, a chance for those of us in economics, political science, psychology, biostatistics, and other fields to get together, all of us shared an interest in these issues, to get together and learn what we were doing across fields. So the first couple meetings just had this flavor of, wow, you know, we didn't know you guys faced the same challenges in psychology that we do in economics and vice versa. Uh, it turns out they're basic methodological issues and challenges that we share across our fields. And uh, getting together, we can learn from each other and, and make progress on these, um, on these issues. The year in reproducibility, um, <clears throat> I would say, has been pretty exciting. There's been a lot of uh, developments, a lot of, a lot of challenges. You're going to hear about some of them uh, later today. Some of our prize recipients later today were involved in uh, some high profile uh, uh, issues and, uh, and you know, cases of fraud. There, were, there was a major psychology uh, reproducibility project that had some sobering, uh, sobering results. Uh, I was, myself, a project of mine was uh, involved in a pretty high profile uh, replication discussion uh, in the media, a project of mine uh, estimating impacts of deworming drugs on kids' health and education that played out in the media and, and on the blogosphere. Um, we you know, engaged with uh, reanalysis re authors, replication authors, uh, on our data, we differed with them on some elements of interpretation, some elements of what the right uh, statistical tests were, and again, this played out in you know, media articles uh, back and forth. A number of people have approached me and said, oh, at the end of this whole you know, replication issue where uh, you know, some of your results were challenged or people disagreed with you, you know, how do you feel about replication? Does this sort of make you more critical of the process? And the answer is absolutely not. I mean, I, I came out of the whole process thinking what we need is more replication, more engagement. I felt like the more the research community weighed in on our data and started looking at the results, the better it was uh, for science. So I really went away from the year uh, thinking we're still at early stages. Replications in many fields are new. They attract a lot of attention. There's something we're not used to. Uh, but to, to paraphrase Brian Nosek, who's the director of the Center for Open Science, uh, he has this great quote. He says, science is hard. Replication is hard. Let's do more of it. Uh, let's not give up uh, now. Uh, we need to do more of it. We need to institutionalize these, uh, these processes. And that's really what BITS is all about, is trying to bring about more, uh, more replication, more reproducibility. So, um, and again, we'll hear about some other high profile uh, cases later today. So, so what, what is BITS uh, doing? What are we up to? We have a number of different activities. And this has been a pretty exciting year for us because we've started a lot of new uh, a lot of new activities, a lot of new initiatives within, uh, within BITS. We've divided them into these five categories. Of course, they kind of, you know, they intermingle and, 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 and certain programs, you know, contribute to different goals. Um, but let me talk about them briefly in turn, just so you have a sense of where we're going with the initiative. Um, and, and then we'll get into some of the details of the day. One, one of our, our overarching 
goals is to uh, create dialogue across fields, as I talked about before, uh, with the aim of building some consensus about what the right uh, research practices are uh, in the social sciences. And then once we've figured that out, to push to change norms in a positive direction. That's really something that's been part of BITS from the, from the start. We were involved together with the Center for Open Science earlier this year in developing transparency guidelines for journals. So BITS co-sponsored a meeting uh, that AAAS also co-sponsored, Center for Open Science. A number of people in this room were involved in this, in this effort to provide guidance to journal editors who want to move in the right direction, who want to figure out what the right journal and refereeing practices are in order to advance a transparency and reproducibility uh, agenda. Amazingly, hundreds and hundreds of journals very quickly signed on. We didn't really know where this was going to go. We didn't know how receptive different journals were going to be. Um, but a lot of them were, were receptive really across fields, including, you know, this includes some biomedical journals and scientific journals in addition to social science journals. So there's momentum in uh, adopting uh, these new norms. That's, that was one of our, I think, exciting uh, activities this year. The BITS blog continues to gain traction and coverage. Uh, we, we just computed the, we tallied up the statistics since the blog started two years ago. Um, we've had 75,000 unique visitors, like pretty happy about that. That was a good number of, of visitors, and about a quarter of them just in the last six months. So there's actually been this, uh, you know, increase in, in attention. So uh, we're hoping that the blog continues to play a role in building a virtual community of people with interest in this area uh, to facilitate discussion and, uh, and dialogue. We've also launched a new program this year that I think may interest a number of you in the room who are who are working in this area um, called the BITS Catalyst Program. And the BITS Catalyst Program is an attempt to provide support, both staffing support and some financial support, to individuals who are aiming to advance a transparency agenda in their own teaching, within their own institution, uh, but need some help and guidance along the way uh, to do that or could use um, some collaboration with, with other BITS faculty and with, with BITS staff. So this is really a network that we hope to institutionalize of transparency and reproducibility supporters across institutions worldwide. We have a few catalysts already signed up. We're hoping to expand massively in 2016. If you believe in the mission and you're interested in, in institutionalizing what you're doing in your own coursework and workshops in your own department, um, let's be in touch so that we can build a really strong network of, of supporters for these ideas. So that's one uh, set of activities. I want to talk about an, another, which is our, our tools and resources. Just in the last month, uh, we've been working like crazy, and the BIT staff uh, in the room here, Alex and Cheyenne and Jen, uh, have been working like crazy on this, on a new website. Please check out the new bits.org website. I'm not saying it should be the first website you open up in the morning. I'm just not saying it shouldn't be. I'm saying think about it, consider it, bookmark it, you know, feel it. It's really good. Um, what is great about bits.org? We've integrated the blog with other content. Uh, we've put together tons of useful resources from uh, lecture slides uh, from summer institutes and courses, uh, training materials, um, pre-analysis plan templates, links to key articles. There's just a lot going on here. Plus, we're listing out all the grants that we're funding. The new catalysts are being linked out so you can figure out who you know, falls in your network or your discipline or your part of the country. Um, it really aims to be an incredibly useful uh, resource for anybody interested in these issues. Um, we're also, you know, the blog is getting a lot more traffic, but we want to strengthen it, and so we want to hear your voices. Anytime you have a cool thought about one of these issues, let us know. We'll gladly post it, retweet it, and, ju and just get the message out. Try to amplify your voice. Um, there's, there's also some links to new software and other things on the website. So, um, you know, bits.org should be your, your portal for, for issues uh, in this area. As part of our core mission of, of um, shifting social norms and, letting, and raising awareness about these issues, we've continued to expand our educational activities as well. Um, this year, we had our second Summer Institute in 2015 here in Berkeley. Again, I see some familiar faces of folks who were, uh, who were here for that. 
The number of applicants for the Summer Institute exploded this summer. We had an incredibly strong group of scholars um, take part across fields. It was, it was a really tremendous success. Um, that was one, one of our activities. I taught a course this past spring uh, semester here at Berkeley, an interdisciplinary PhD course on transparent and reproducible methods in the social sciences um, that uh, was well attended. All those lecture notes, slides, and all the audio are online. They're on YouTube. So please check those out if you're trying to pull material on a particular topic into your course or you're interested um, in the course. Of course, all the syllabus and other materials is available um, for that. We've also made a conscious decision to move beyond the kind of small initial network of, of some of the folks who are interested in BITS to start with and to expand um, our activities and our influence internationally. We've had a big push to uh, reach out to uh, workshops that are being conducted on research methods and related issues internationally. We've conducted multiple workshops in East Africa. We've conducted a workshop in the UK. We have others in the works for 2016 um, to connect the research community outside of North America to a lot of what's been going on within BITS. And this has been really successful so far. We have a number of folks here attending the meeting today who have traveled here internationally um, to take part. And I think that's testament to, to the growth of the network and, and really all the interest there is um, in these issues worldwide. <clears throat> what about research? Um, another big development, one of the things I'm most excited about over the past year is we've um, raised and started uh, competing out and distributing research funds for people doing original research in this area. Meta-research, research on transparency and reproducibility uh, practices. This is our so-called social science meta-analysis and research transparency program, the SMART uh, grant program. Uh, we awarded 10 grants in the cycle this fall across social science disciplines. There are some amazing projects in the works um, that I think are going to be really influential. We're really lucky to have a number of the recipients here um, for this meeting. And actually tomorrow, at tomorrow's session, um, there's actually going to be uh, a panel for the SMART grant recipients to give us the quick five minute a uh, summary of their plans for the grant, what they're going to be doing, what topics they're tackling. So if you're interested in hearing about really the latest cutting edge topics on meta research and research transparency, that session tomorrow is going to give you really a taste of what's, uh, of what's going on. BITS has also been growing our internal research capacity. Garrett Christensen is, a, is the BITS uh, staff postdoc. He's been very active at at writing and publishing in this area. We're going to be hiring another staff researcher this year. So uh, our own internal research capacity to tackle topics in this area is growing. And, and I know Garrett, and, and I, I think with our future uh, research staff hires in this area, we're really excited about collaborations with those of you working in this area. So if you have you know, projects you're interested in or think collaboration could be useful, um, as we grow, we're able to partner, I think, more effectively with other organizations um, in this space. Okay, what about our fifth, uh, the fifth area, recognition? You're going to hear a lot about our activities in this area today. We're going to be awarding um, the inaugural Lemur Rosenthal Prizes for Open Social Science today. This is a new prize, the first that we know of in the social sciences to recognize leaders in transparent and reproducible research. The tide is turning. Things are changing in the social sciences. There is more interest and activity in these, in these topics than there's been uh, in a long time, if not, if not ever. And our prize recipients really embody the best of what's going on today. We're so excited they're here. We're so excited to be able to recognize them and start a conversation with them about what the exciting new directions are uh, in this area. So I, I'm, I'm just super, uh, super excited to, um, to have them here today. And I'll, I'll be introducing Ed Lemer, who's here today in a minute, because uh, he's going to be speaking next. So the fact that he could be here and, and take part in this and, uh, and really share his perspective with us is, is really, uh, really special. Bob Rosenthal could not make it here um, today. He has some limited travel um, at this point. 
but the plan is for him to join us uh, over an audio connection later. So hopefully all the AV issues will work out with that. Um, but for the question and answer period later, the plan is for him to be online and you know, start thinking of the questions you want to you want to throw out to Ed and Bob. They've been they've been thinking about these issues you know longer and harder than than anybody. So uh, it's it's just an incredible uh, honor to have their their presence today. So as I was just mentioning, the ecosystem is changing and growing in this space of, of transparent and and and, and open um, social science research. These are just a subset of the organizations that we've been working with and partnering with over the last couple years. We have uh, folks here in attendance today from our funders who have made all this possible. Uh, the Lima Rosenthal Prize is funded by the Templeton Foundation very generously. Uh, without their support, we wouldn't be able to recognize all the exciting talent in this area. We're incredibly excited to partner with them. Uh, the Hewlett Foundation has been uh, really funding and supporting the international expansion of BITS. We shared a vision with them that this was the necessary, a really necessary direction for us to go in, and uh, we're really delighted uh, to, to, to have uh, you know, represent, representatives from, from the Hewlett Foundation here today. There are other important funders of these initiatives, the Arnold Foundation, the Sloan Foundation um, here. I think if you look at this ecosystem and you just turn the clock back five years, there were a few of these groups doing work in this space on transparent and reproducible social science, but not a ton. You know, you could look at I, I, ICPSR and some others who are really leaders, you know, maybe, maybe a handful of others here, but a lot of these organizations are new or newly interested in, the, in these issues, but they've really uh, thrown their weight behind these issues. And, and the kind of critical mass we feel now in meetings like this and other ones is really very exciting. So, so the ecosystem is changing, BITS is part of it. Uh, and with the partnerships with, uh, with all you guys, I, I, I'm really confident that, um, that we can continue to make, make a difference. Let me say a few words about the, uh, the meeting agenda today and, uh, and into tomorrow, and then I'll, I'll get into, into introductions. Our next speaker is going to be uh, Professor Ed Lemer from UCLA. He's going to be sharing his perspectives on some really important issues around interpretation of statistical results um, and... Uh, what he calls S values. I'm really excited to, um, to hear about, about that. I'll introduce Ed a little more formally in a sec. Um, Paul Romer is going to be, was going to be our next speaker. Paul this morning got in touch with us that he had some travel difficulties, but he was able to film a video of himself delivering his remarks. So he will be, you know, if not quite his face, at least his slides will be looming down on us uh, shortly, and I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, so he's going to be talking about issues of transparency in economic theory. It's not an area where we usually think of kind of obvious applications of transparency uh, issues, but one that's, that's very important. You know, we usually think about empirical work, uh, experimental work, but, but there's a lot of other um, applications. Uh, after that, we're going to uh, have the, the Lima Rosenthal Prize uh, ceremony. We're going to hear about the work of this year's recipients, and it's really amazing what they've done, just the entrepreneurial activity and the creativity of, of this group. Um, and we're going to close today with a question and answer panel with some of the speakers, some others who are in attendance, and our uh, prize recipients. And I think we see this as just an exciting chance to, to exchange ideas and, and, and just get on the same page about what some of the cutting edge issues are, of course, it's not on the agenda, but the next bullet point there is the reception. Um, so that, that's going to be uh, at around 5 today. Tomorrow is your chance to hear about a lot of the latest research uh, in this area. We have four or five paper talks uh, of really exciting new projects that I think are, are pushing the frontier of our knowledge on meta-research and transparency topics. And than that panel I talked to you about, about uh, with the SMART grant recipients detailing what they're doing, which is, which is just super, um, super exciting. Then following the tradition of the last three or four years, Kevin and I, I think you're going to have a kind of open discussion for whoever's left, you know, mid-afternoon tomorrow to think about next steps for BITS, uh, really as a research community. And we've done this every year, and it's actually, those sessions produce a lot of really good ideas. A lot of what we've 
been able to do in the last year, a lot of those ideas were hatched at these open brainstorming sessions. So again, if you're um, you know, invested in this area and able to stick around, that's, that's a really great chance to, to brainstorm. Okay, so that is the agenda for today and tomorrow.